Wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. It says few will find the narrow way. Few will find the narrow way. Yes. Because today what is being taught is, you just believe that and you're in. Because believe that is missing something very important out of it. Yes, Pastor. Yeah. And we'll look at that in just a second. Yeah. But read that again, please, Pastor Dan. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be, many which, go there be which will go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. It doesn't say many. Right. It says few. Few will find it. Let's go to Luke chapter 8. And let's read verse 5 through 15. It's a, a long portion, but I think there's something in this parable that is must, it, it's a must to be understood. Okay? So Luke chapter 8, verse 5 through 15, please. And a sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. It was trodden down. The fowls of the air devoured it. And then... And some so, fell upon a rock. Uh-huh, and... And as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away, because it lacked moisture. And now... And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. And other fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit a hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And his disciples asked him, saying... What might this parable be? Keep going. And he said, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables, that seeing they might not see, and hearing they might not understand. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are they that hear. Then cometh the devil, and taketh away the word out now, of their now, hearts. Now if you slow down a second. So those by the wayside are they that hear the gospel. Mm -hmm. But then the devil comes and takes away the word out of their hearts. Mm. Not minds, out of their hearts. hearts. Lest yes, they, they should, should believe. believe and be wait, saved. wait, believe meaning in, in. and be saved. So the word is received. The word is actually believed, but it's false faith. And before it gets into their inner being where they see what it means, which I'll get into in just a second, the devil steals that which they've heard. And now there is a second group, and it says... Then on the rock, verse... The then on, they verse, on the rock are they which, when they hear, receive the word with, with joy. With joy. They receive the word with joy. And these have no and, root. But they have no depth, no depth, no depth. Which for a while believe. Now let's just stop with that. They have no depth. This is important. No depth doesn't just mean that the ground is shallow there's been no preparation no hunger no one really to pray for them who pray them into the kingdom no depth everyone of you that's sitting here someone prayed you in and there's more I can say but I'll, I'll just say it in just a few minutes on time so it says which for a while believe, but in times of temptation fall away, because they did not yet reach the place to believe in. 
It takes time to believe in. It's a process, to be honest with you. And then there's another group. And that which fell among thorns are they, which when they have heard, go forth, and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life, and bring no fruit to perfection. Now, this third group, I believe the majority of the people in many of the churches today are this group who have passed the first stage, passed the second stage, but still are in the third stage where they can still lose everything. Because of, it says, thorns. The cares and riches and pleasures of this life bring no fruit. Now you go to the fourth group, and they're the last group that make it through the narrow way. So let's go. But that on the good ground are they, which in an honest, honest and, and good, good heart, heart Having, having heard, heard the word. And wait, let's not rush this one and keep it. Keep it. That's the tough one. Mm. It's easy to hear it. It's even easy to receive it. It's tough to keep it. Only those who keep it have reached that last stage of believing in. So the second you keep it, now you're in that narrow way where you'll make it because there's patience there. They bring forth fruit with patience. So in Matthew 7, 21 through 27, we have a very amazing statement made by the Lord. So can you go to it with me quick? I'm almost done with this portion of the teaching. Matthew 7, 21 through 27. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of because heaven. Because they are the ones who still believe that. Not in. Keep going. Shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father. Do with which, the will of my Father. Keep going. Which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied? Many, in that hold it, hold it, you're rushing. Many will say in that day, not a few, many will say in that day, many, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? In your name we've cast out devils. In your name we've done many wonderful works, meaning miracles. And he'll say, What? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. That's scary. I mean, if he said, I don't know you, that'll be easier. But I never knew you. I never knew you. Ever, from day one. There's something about God that's frightening. When God expels you, he dismisses you from his memory. That's scary stuff. It's like you, you were never his. So, real faith, real faith, which we need so badly today, has Jesus at its center. And real faith is produced only by scripture in who Jesus is. You know, I no longer believe that the virgins that were lacking the oil were lacking the anointing. They were, they were lacking the knowledge of Scripture. That's the oil. The oil is not the anointing. The, anointing, the, the, the oil is the actual Scripture that they were lacking. Because it says all were virgins. All were virgins. But not all had the oil, not all had scripture in our life. If you really look at 
what the word says about scripture, it is oil. It says that he made him siphon honey out of the rock and oil. The word is oil. 80% of church people have not read the whole Bible. 80% of you sitting here have not read the whole Bible. Now maybe in, in a conference like this it's different, but I've, I have tested it over and over and in many meetings I've said, how many have not read the whole Bible? 80% put, put their hands up. And I don't want to do that to you because I will, I will actually embarrass you. There's eight, possibly 80% of you sitting here have not read the whole Bible. How do you expect to make it? You don't have even the power in you to make it. You don't. With what's coming to the earth, you're just kidding yourself. With all the deceptions, really, are you going to make it? That's a joke. Without the word of God in your life, you will be destroyed. Without scripture, the real word of God, old Testament and New Testament. Ignoring scripture is very dangerous. Very dangerous. I've asked pastors in meetings like this all over the world, how many have not read the whole word of God? 40% stand up. Of pastors, pastors. You wonder why they're leaving the ministry. You wonder why some of them are not all normal in their mentality. Preachers today have mental trouble, some of them. Even having demons, some, some of them have devils in them. Because they, they lack the scripture. Great peace have they that love your law. Great peace have they that love your law. I've heard your word in my heart that I will not sin against you. It's the scripture. That's it. So real faith is born by scripture. In 2 Corinthians 13 verse 5 says, it says, examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith. Examine whether you are in the faith. Can you go to Proverbs 14 verse 12? And read that for the people. In fact, it's there. I'll read it. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Because it seems to be right. Everything looks good but it's not good at all do you remember in john chapter 8 so in verse 30 let's 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 go to it in verse 30 it says many believed on him not in him but on him but were they really saved as he spake these words many believed on him but if you go to verse 44, the Lord says, you're children of the devil. Those same people that believed on him. <clears throat> I'm reading the Bible. John 8. You put the, those amazing portions together. John 8, verse 30. Go back to it. It says in verse 30, as he spake these words, many believed on him. Now when you go to verse 44, it says what? You are of your father the devil. And the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. He abode not in the truth because there's no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he's a liar and the father of of it now these same people who believed on not in believed on jesus said your father is the devil look at verse 59 
those same people who believed on him, in verse 59 of the same chapter, it says, then they took up stones to cast at him. They wanted to throw rocks at him. Were they saved? No. They believed on him, but the Lord knew that they were not his. He said, your, your father's the devil. And later they wanted to throw rocks at him. So, what am I saying? I'm saying something very important. <clears throat> Abraham believed in God. To believe in God means you trust him. You completely surrender to him. Many will say, Lord, Lord. But I'll say, I never knew you because they wanted him only as Savior, not as Lord. They wanted to be saved, but not to obey. They received the Lord for the wrong reason. Not to submit to him. They received him to escape hell. But not to submit to him. They wanted to use him as a fire escape. He's not a fire escape. Can we go to Romans 10, verse 3, please? So those that believe in, in Jesus, they must do what the Bible says. Here's what it says in Romans 10, verse 3. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness, are going about to establish their own righteousness, and they have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Meaning, to believe in Jesus, you must renounce all your own righteousness and trust him completely. That all the good things you've done are not going to get you into heaven. Proverbs 28, 13 says, Proverbs 28, 13 says something very important on what it means to believe in. He that covers his sins will not prosper, but whoever will confess and forsake them will have mercy. To believe in means to repent and to trust him for salvation. To give him your life completely. So, I, I, I like to explain it like this. To believe that, it's easy. So if I said to you tonight, do you believe that I exist? You'll all say yes. But if I said, do you believe in me? Some of you nice people who like me will say yes. You can't believe in me because to believe in me, give me your soul to keep. Believe in me, give me your soul to keep. You can't give a man your soul to keep because he can't keep it for you. Only God can do that. To believe in means to give God your life. Not to believe that, 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 that. No, so does the devil. You give him your life. You surrender to his will. You forsake your own righteousness and trust him for his righteousness. And in addition, you confess and forsake your sin. In Matthew 11, 28 and 30, please read that for them, Pastor Dan. Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. You shall find rest unto your souls. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. 
So you have to come to the Lord in repentance. Coming to Jesus means repentance. It means turning away from your sins. So when Jesus said, come on to me, he was saying, repent. Give me your sins. Leaving all confidence in self behind, renouncing all love for sin and the world, and making Jesus your all in all. That's what it means to believe in. And Colossians 2, 6 and 7, wraps it all up for us. Colossians 2, 6 and 7, it says, As you have therefore received Christ, Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. So, counterfeit faith says, just believe that. Real faith says, believe him. Yes. Surrender all. Let the word be your source for faith in Christ Jesus. And God's people said, Amen. now lift your hands and pray in the spirit out loud. And Lord, I pray everyone who is watching and listening will come to that place in their experience with you Lord that like those who receive the seed on good ground with a good and honest heart will yield fruit for your glory in the mighty name of Jesus that not one of them will fail you. Not one of them will come short. That they will stand on that day blameless in your presence. You're able to keep us from falling and to present us before your throne without blame. Without blame. For only you can do it. You are our God. The only wise God. Give you all the praise. Hallelujah. Keep praying and blessing his holy name. And you make that decision right now in this auditorium and in your homes. That you will not fail him. Redeem the time. Forsake all to follow him. Jesus and only Jesus. Without him, life has no meaning whatsoever. Give him your life totally today. In Jesus' blessed name. Keep praying, keep praying, saints. Keep praying. Keep praying out loud. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be your holy name, Savior. decided to follow Jesus lift your hands and sing it with me I have decided to follow Jesus I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back no turning back Though none go with me 
still will I follow. Though none go with me, though none go with me, still I will follow. No turning back. No turning back The cross before me The world behind me Lift your voices The cross before me The world behind me The cross before me The world behind me No turning back no turning back. One more time, I have decided. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning, no turning back. Take your seats, please. Now I'm going to minister the word that I planned to for tonight for you. But I think I had to do this first one because I think it's important that everyone is really in. And the people said, yeah. So. Let's talk about the preservation of the saints. This is something that uh, to me is important. The longer I live, the more convinced I am that we are predestined. Predestination is in the Bible. I don't believe in predetermination. I believe in predestination. Predetermination. Predetermination says once saved, always saved. I don't believe that. But I believe that predestination means I am still responsible to obey and to follow. So, can a true believer be eternally lost? Can you lose your salvation? Well, well give me time to show you scripture. Huh? We're going to talk about the preservation and the perseverance of the faith of the believers. So, yeah, there are those who believe it's possible for a born-again believer to, to be eternally lost, but I believe that the preservation of the saints is something that's more important to look into than just some controversy people have question for a long time because it is revealed truth revealed in scripture for the establishing of the heart in grace and I think what we're about to look at is really bound up in the honor of God in the power of the blood of Jesus, in the power of the Holy Spirit. So if through sinning a believer perishes, then some of God's promises have no value. So you say yes, well, but let's look at the word. Because, you know, th there's two sides to this coin. There's two sides to this truth. You have those who say, no, you cannot. Absolutely no, you cannot. Those who say, yes, you can. But if you look at the Bible, really you look at it properly, you see the preservation of the believer and the perseverance of the believer together. When you see it together, it brings balance. So 
let's go to John 3, the Gospel of John chapter 3, verse 15 and 16, to begin looking at this question. Can a true born-again believer perish? Here's what we see in the Bible. Let's let, let the Bible speak for itself. Whosoever believeth in him, remember the in him again? Here it is. Whoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. How about 1 John? 1 John 5.13. We're, we're, we're establishing scripture here. First John 5, 13. These things have I written un, unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Now we go to John 6, 37. The Gospel of John, chapter 6, verse 37. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. These are very comforting and very established truth in the Bible. So here the Lord is telling us that he never expels or casts away any that come to him. And he adds in verse 39 of the same chapter, he adds this truth. Go to verse 39. And this is the Father's will which has sent me, that all, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing. This is the Father's will, that I should lose nothing. but should raise it up again in the last day. So if, if then the Father has given us to Jesus and we have come to him and he has promised to never cast us out and that he will lose nothing of all that the Father has given him, and you and I should be eternally lost, what's, what's the value of these promises I just showed you? Again, we're told in Philippians 1.6, great promise, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So here we're told God will do his part, providing you and I do our part, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. But Paul makes a very powerful statement when, when he said that he's confident that God will do it, that God will fulfill it. So how can we trust the Lord, if he doesn't mean all these scriptures, all the things we just read, and more. The Bible says, let, let God be true and every man a liar. If as a believer in the Lord Jesus, someone perishes because of failure, sin, then our salvation is dependent on works. Which contradicts the Bible. In Titus 3 verse 5, the Bible says, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us. Titus 3 5. So if my ultimate salvation is determined by my obedience and faithfulness, then I earn it. I'm going to say it again. If my ultimate salvation is determined by my obedience and faithfulness to the Lord, then I earn it. 
So let's go to Ephesians 2. Let's look at verse 8 and verse 9. I'm showing you now the preservation of the saints. Not the perseverance, preservation. So Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, Pastor Dan. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Keep going. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Yeah. So if my salvation is due to my obedience and work, then God is robbed of his glory. If my salvation is due to my obedience and my work, then God is robbed of his glory. Let's look at Psalm 115, verse 1. Psalm 115, verse 1 says, Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name give glory, for thy mercy and for thy truth's sake. So to believe that I can lose everything is to say that I am on an extended probation. Are you listening? Yeah. Yeah. But we say with Paul in 2 Timothy 14 verse 12, here's what he says, 2 Timothy 1, 12. I'm sorry, I said 4. 2 Timothy 1, chapter 1, verse 12. For the which cause I also suffer these things, never, nevertheless I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. So I give him my life, He's going to keep it. Look at Hebrews 7.25. Hebrews 7.25. Pastor Dan, you're going to read that for me. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession now for them. Now that's a powerful verse, so read it again. Wherefore he is able also to save them to the, the uttermost, uttermost that come unto God, God by him. him. Now this is the key. Come unto God by him. Seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Yes. To deny the eternal security of the believer is to limit the keeping power of God. God and to limit the office of the Lord's intercession because it says he's able to save them to the uttermost that come to God by him seeing he ever lives to make intercession for them so for me to question that I can lose my salvation over some failure is to limit the power of his office of intercession. In 1 John 2 verse 1, in 1 John 2 verse 1, and Romans 8, 33, 34, but let's look at 1 John, the epistle of John, 1 John 2 verse 1. Go ahead, Dan. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not, and if, and any, if man any man sin, sin we have, have an, an advocate, advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Now that settles the question. If we sin, if any man sin, we have a lawyer. We have an intercessor. Romans 8. 33, 34, please. Go ahead, Dan, when, when, you, when you, you get there. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. 
Read verse 34. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who, who also, also maketh intercession, intercession for us. Meaning that, who is it that, that condemns you? No one. Because Jesus died and rose from the dead and is at God's right hand, who is still making intercession for you that you would not fall. Or lose it all. Now we're going to bring balance. Because we should never forget that we as believers have a responsibility. Because our responsibility is do not turn the grace of God into wickedness look at Jude 1 4 and then we're going to read 2nd Corinthians 5 21 right through 6 verse 1 this is where you bring balance okay we're in he's our high priest we're secure we're preserved but for there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning, turning the, the grace of, of our God, God into, into lasciviousness, lasciviousness and, and denying the, the only Lord God, God and our Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. They had turned the grace of God into lasciviousness. So just because we're in, let's not turn the grace of God into lasciviousness, into wickedness. Just because we, we, we've been accepted by the beloved, guaranteed eternal life, let's also obey 2 Corinthians 5, beginning at verse 21, right through 6 verse 1, because it's all one message. Keep going. For he hath made him to be sin for us. Who knew no sin. Keep going. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. We then as we workers. We then. So he just gave us something very important. Let's go and reread it. Chapter 5, 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us. Who knew no sin. Who knew no sin. That. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Now that's a fact. So it's done. But as we, workers we, together with him, we beseech you do not receive the grace of God in vain. In vain. Yes, God. You know, the, 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 the thing that is somewhat a problem for me and for many believers, but now I have to dismiss it from my head so it's no longer a problem, is that you have to dismiss the chapters and the verses when you read the Bible. Because they, they put chapters in, the, the Archbishop of Canterbury years ago put chapters in the Bible and he put them at the wrong place. So he cut the messages should have left it alone. But I know it makes it simple, well, chapter so and so, verse such and such. But it, it, in many cases, it starts at the, at the wrong spot. So this one should have started a little earlier than yes. where we read it, but it doesn't matter. You have to dismiss it sometimes, just keep going. So he made him to be no sin for us. Where is righteousness? Don't receive his grace in vain. So we're, we're bringing balance. I believe with all of my heart in predestination. There is no way on earth you and I can find God. How can a man find God? How can dust find God? He found you. You cannot find him if you tried. If you tried. I 
saw a man in California one time with a big T-shirt. It says, keep the faith. I said to the guy with me at that time, Tim Brasic, that's unbiblical. Yeah. You can't keep the faith. It's the faith that keeps you. Oh. He's keeping you. We're kept by the power of God. We, we can't keep the faith if we even try. Can you really find Jesus? No. Think about yourself. Before you were saved, what was your life like? It was a mess. Most of you living in sin, some dark place, some bondage. And he found you. You didn't find him. Some of you that grew up in a Christian home, well, you thought you're in because your dad and mom were Christians. But I have news for you. God has no grandchildren. Did you hear what I said? Yes, Say it. God has no grandchildren. One more time. God has no grandchildren. Which means you have to find him for yourself. He only has children, not grandchildren. And when you find the Lord, rather when he finds you, your life begins. No matter who you are. I knew a man years ago, years ago, in OCC, who went to Tibet trying to find God. And he came back with devils. Not with God, with devils. He was weird. He thought he could find God in Tibet. There's a lot of people like that. They want to go find God. You got people, uh, priests that live in caves in my part of the world. They, be, they become a little uh, on the crazy side. They live in caves and they look terrible and they smell even worse. <laughs> That's a fact. They're looking for God in a cave, poor people. Are you praying for me? It's not going to work. <laughs> Look, brother, when you are my age, you don't care what people think. It's too late to change people like us in the 70s. When you turn 70, you don't care what people think. You just say it like it is. Black is black and white is white and yellow is yellow and green is green. And the people said... Well, let's do it. Now, back to what I was saying, it's important to understand you cannot find the Lord. He found you. Yes. You cannot love him. He loved you first. Yes. He gave you the, the, the heart to love him with. Yes. The faith to believe in with. Before you were, you, you were saved, you were on your way to hell not heaven, and he rescued you because he set his love upon you before the foundation of the world. That is incredible love. That God would choose you before the foundation of the world. I have cousins in Canada by the hundreds, and I mean by the hundreds, and second cousins. They got together a few years ago. There was 250 of them. Just in Toronto. I didn't show up because it was snowing. I didn't want to go. They all got, got mad at me for not showing up. But I got the pictures. But a few weeks ago, my uncle passed. And many of them were there. So I was there with them. They've, they've heard the gospel. They've been to my meetings more than once. You might as well be talking to a chair. They've seen the power of God and they don't know or, on the, or even want it. I witnessed to many of them. My uncle argued with me when I said, you're, you're a sinner. 
He said, how dare you call me a sinner? I said, because the Bible says all have sinned. He began cussing at me for saying that. I said, uncle, calm down. All have sinned is in the Bible. He said, I haven't sinned. I said, yes, you have. I said, the Bible says all have sinned. And one of the all, he said, in here. He says, God is a terrible God to send people like me to hell. That's what he said. He said, I'm a good man. He said, I don't lie. I don't cheat. I don't do anything wrong. And he was lying right through all, all that, telling me that. <laughs> he said, why would God send me to hell? I'm, I'm, I'm a good man. I don't hurt any, anyone. He got angry for me saying that the Bible says you're a sinner. He, he began cussing me out. It got dangerous being around that guy. He didn't want to hear it. He began screaming at me. His wife, who was an atheist, an atheist, dying with cancer, with cancer. My sister Rose was with her right there. She'll tell you, I'm telling you the truth. My mother and my sister went to pray for her. And they said, can we pray with you? She said, no. And my mom said, you're dying, lady. You're dying. Except Jesus. Now she said, I don't want to. I don't need him. I don't want him. She's dying. She rejected the gospel completely. She said, I have not talked to him, and I don't want to talk to God. My mom said, you, you're seconds away, minutes away from dying. Just pray after me. No, I don't want to pray. It, did that happen, yes or no? Tell them so they don't think we're lying to them. Huh? Yes, it did. She did. Yes, she did. She didn't want to accept Jesus or pray. And when she died, my mother told us she looked like the devil himself. She said, away from the she said her face looked like a demon. And the more you see that, the more you believe in predestination. That our family said yes like this, and they all said no. Well, not all, but the majority said no. And to this day, they will not accept the gospel. They have more money than you have hair. And your hair, and your hair, and your hair combined. <laughs> you, you don't have a whole lot left. <laughs> more hair than all of you. More money than you have hair on your head. They have never given us a cent. Never give the, a dollar to the ministry. Any ministry. They're just money, money. That's all they talk about. That's all they live for. They, they drive expensive cars, big homes. They live lavishly, no God, no salvation, no interest in salvation. They, they think we're all crazy to believe. They think we're crazy to believe. My cousin said, you must be crazy. He said, you're crazy to believe all that stuff. And then he came to my crusade later after he told me I was crazy to believe the gospel. He came to my, to my service at the... In, in, in Toronto at the Maple Leaf Gardens. He said, there's 20,000 people to hear you. He said, maybe you're not as crazy as I thought. He said, <laughs> he said nobody wants to hear a crazy man. He said, they, they can't all be crazy. I said, well, the, the, the crazy one is you, not us. <laughs> I said, you're the one who doesn't want to hear the truth. He, he said, I just can't accept it. He said, I can't accept all that stuff. And you know what is so sad? They look so sad. There's no joy. Not one bed of joy. They're always, something is on them like, like a cloud of darkness that takes hold of them. It's just money, money, and money. That's all they do. That's all they talk about. Oh, my goodness. It's so sad to watch these people. This family, you love your family, you just don't, don't understand. 
why is it that when we heard the gospel, we all said yes with tears in a minute like this? My mom and my dad heard the gospel in my service, waited for me at the house. I never thought they'd be saved. I walk in at 2 in the morning thinking they're going to kick me out of the house because my father told me, if you preach, we're going to kick you out. They heard the gospel. They had never heard it before. And when I walk in, the first thing out of my dad's lips is, son, how can we become like you? He got saved that night, gloriously. And my mom, and my mom. My mom, for years, had prayer meetings every Tuesday in, in, in her little apartment with people. And she, didn't, she did not even speak English. She would lay hands, and they would all start falling everywhere. She, she cooked every day. Every day she cooked. Whether anybody came or not, she cooked every day. So I'd go and see her. I said, Mom, there's, there's nobody here to eat this food. Oh, she said, yes, they'll eat it. I said, well, who? She said, don't worry about it. She cooked every day. And if we did not come, she, she would go to the homeless people downtown and give it to them. Give it to them. She did that every day. She lived a real Christian life, that, that woman. But the patriarch of Jerusalem who baptized me came to rebuke my parents for letting me leave the church. Greek Orthodox, you know, they believe if you leave the, the Greek Orthodox church, you're out. You're, you're not going to go to heaven. And they all look like, you know, Abraham Lincoln and beards and crosses everywhere. And they pray in Greek and they have icons they worship and they incense, all that stuff. Dear God in heaven, I lived through that thing. I was an altar boy when I was a little kid in church, and I would choke behind that priest. He'd be with a censor going, carry a laser, carry a and me behind him, <coughs> almost dying. <laughs> and that man came, the patriarch of Jerusalem came to our home to rebuke my parents for letting me meet Jesus. Imagine the, the, the guy who's the head of the Greek Orthodox Church, big long beard, the works, rebuked my parents for letting me leave the, the church, he said. He, he said, your son has lost his mind to be born again. He said he was already a Christian because he was a member of the Greek Orthodox Church. And then when my father and mom got saved, he came to rebuke them and they rebuked him right back. So, that's why today I believe in predestination because I'm thinking, I, I, I know all those people who think you're crazy to believe the gospel. You might as well be speaking to a wall than them. How many have family members like that? Look how many of you. They all think you're nuts to, be, to believe. Because they're blind. Totally blind. Well, only God knows who are his. The Lord knows who belongs to him. That's all that matters. And the people said? Amen. Well, let me finish my message. Are you enjoying it? Yes. Well, thank God you are. All right, let, let me finish because this is, we, we, we've got to talk about now the, the, what we do, how we persevere. So the precious truth We've just finished talking about our preservation. It's designed, it's designed to deepen our gratefulness and gratitude to the Lord for His grace. But, like every other truth in the Bible, the truth of preservation and the truth of perseverance sometimes can be twisted. It says so in Second Peter three sixteen. So, can we go to Second Peter three sixteen quick? Because some believe once saved, always saved. You know. Let's read Second Peter three sixteen, please. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures. So they, they twist the scriptures to, be, to, 
to kind of fit what they believe, that you cannot lose your salvation. Well, the Bible is clear, you have to persevere. And I think it's wrong to, uh, to talk about a, a peace and a joy you are not, un, you are not really entitled to, to experience. They believe they are saved, but they don't show fruit with it. There's no fruit. They, they persuade themselves that God will carry them to heaven. This is not real confidence. Divine preservation must be accompanied with divine perseverance. So when where God, where God has promised to preserve anyone on a course of self-will, I should really ask, no, where has God promised to, pre to preserve anyone who is on a, on a course of self-will and self-pleasing? Nowhere. If people deliberately drink poison, no amount of praying will deliver them from the effects of that poison. If I neglect the grace of God, then my soul will starve. If, if, if you or me deliberately run into the places of temptation, then we will reap what we are sowing. That little word, if, is often used in the Bible to protect us so we can persevere. Let's look at John 8.31. I'm not going to go too long. I'm almost done. So let's just read it. John 8.31 and then Hebrews 3.14. They said, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And Hebrews 3.14 that says, for we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. And 2 Peter 1 verse 10, that says, wherefore the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and election sure. And then in 1 John 2 24, very important scripture here too. 1 John 2.24, it says, Let that therefore abide in you, which you have heard from the beginning. If that which you have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, he shall also continue in the Son and in the Father. So it's about perseverance. So walking in obedience to God's command does not earn us our salvation. It's proof of our salvation. I'm going to say it again. Walking in obedience to God's commandments does not earn us our salvation. It's the proof of our salvation. Denying ungodliness and worldly lusts and mortifying our members, taking the cross and following the Lord does not secure heaven. It shows we're on the way. May I say it again? Okay. Denying unselfishness. Denying self and worldly lusts and mortifying our members, taking the cross and following the Lord, does not secure heaven. It shows us we're on the way to heaven. It shows that we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but them who believe. So we need to be on our sword, or sorry, on our guard, I should say. We need to be on, on our guard against that one-sided salvation. So what, what, what it comes down to is the believer has been saved from the penalty of sin. But now what happens as we persevere, we are saved from the power of sin. This is very important uh, part here that I've, I've, I've got to explain to you. If you read uh, the book of Romans, 
he begins with justification. From chapter 1 to chapter 5, he talks about being justified by faith. Then sanctification, 6 and 7. Then glorification in chapter 8. What he's talking about is very important. That as a Christian, when I say yes to Jesus and I believe in Christ Jesus and I surrender to him completely, I am at that moment free from the penalty of sin. So I'm declared righteous. That's what a justification means. Now I move into a second place, into a place where I have to live the life. I have to grow up into that righteousness that I have been declared into. So God declares me to be righteous when I'm justified. Now he wants me to grow into it, grow into it. And growing into it is sanctification. And sanctification, this is what I mean by persevering. Working it out. Now comes the time when I will be free from the presence of sin. So when I was saved, when you were saved, we were free from the penalty of sin. Now as we walk with the Lord daily, denying self and the world, daily carrying his cross and following him day by day by faith, now we are growing into his righteousness and now we are being freed slowly from the power of sin. Then the day will come when the Lord returns and will be free from the presence of sin. So this is called the good fight of faith. Good fight of faith. All right. Let's go to Psalm 138, verse 8. I love this part. Can you start playing real gentle back there? I'm almost done. In Psalm 138, verse 8, I love this. Psalm 138, verse 8. 138, 138, verse 8. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the works of thine own hands. Now this is powerful because he says the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. That is preservation. But then he says, forsake not the works of your own hands, because it's possible that he will. So I have to persevere. You see it? How many see it? Say yes. He starts with, the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. That means he's preserving us. But, he adds, don't forsake the work of your hands. Meaning that if I walk away, he'll forsake the work of his hands. Can we go now to... Uh, Hebrews. In fact, let's go to John 10, 28, and then Hebrews 6, 12. Thank you, Lord. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. How about Hebrews 6, 12 now? So we just read that promise. That's, that is preservation right there. But look at Hebrews. That you be not slothful, 
we, followers. Wait, wait, wait. We've got to put them together. You've got to put John 10, 28 and Hebrews 6, 12 together. In John 10, 28, the Lord says, what now? Let's look at it one more time. I give unto them eternal life. They shall never perish. Neither will any man be able to pluck, pluck them out of my hands. That is preservation. But then he says, don't be slothful. Perseverance. But followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Do you see the difference, saints? If you do, say yes. yes. All right. Let's make our calling short tonight, saints. The truth of divine preservation is useless if it's not accompanied by the truth of perseverance. People sometimes don't understand Hebrews 6 and Hebrews 10 because they don't understand Hebrews altogether. So I'm going to explain that to you and then we're going to stop. So lift, lift your hands to heaven. Lord, let them see it in Jesus' mighty name and for your glory. Amen. You can stop playing a second. People have had trouble with these two portions of scripture. So in, 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 in Hebrews 6, it says if we sin willfully, if we sin willfully, if we've tasted the power of the world to come, we're, we're cut off, we're out. In Hebrews 10, the same kind of message with a little more intensity with it. What people don't realize is who he was writing to and why he was saying that he said. Sinning willfully. What is sinning willfully? David sinned willfully when he saw Bathsheba and willfully killed her husband. What does it mean then in Hebrews? We have to understand the history of, of the early church. The Hebrews, Jewish believers, who became believers, lost everything when they got saved. Meaning, meaning, Judaism was accepted by the Roman authorities in those days. And anyone who was a Jew was protected by law to practice their beliefs freely, to be able to work, to be able to have a business, to be able to prosper and have life as they wanted it. There was no... Uh, pressure on them to worship Roman gods or be bound to Roman laws that had to do with Roman, with Roman citizens. They, 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 they were free to live under the protection of the Romans. Certain laws naturally they had to obey, civil laws and such things, but not religious laws. So the synagogue and the temple was a place of, pro of protection for the Jews. Now, if the Jewish leadership decided you're not a Jew anymore, they'd throw you out. The second they would throw you out, you were immediately looked upon as a sect by the Romans and therefore persecuted. No one would be allowed to help you or feed you, or hire you under Roman law. Because the Jewish authorities dismissed you as a Jew, now you have no rights under Roman law. You became an outcast. If anyone would help you, they would also be punished. So when the early believers of the day were still allowed in the temple, and the synagogues, all was well. 
But later they were kicked out. That's why they were afraid to be kicked out of the synagogues when the Lord was on earth because they, they would lose the rights as Jews. That's why. So when the Holy Spirit fell on the day of Pentecost for a season, all was well because the apostles and early believers were still accepted as Jews. The day came when the Jewish authorities said, you're no longer Jews, you're now a sect outside Judaism. Therefore, the early believers lost everything. Not only did they lose their protection as Jews, they, they lost their cover. Nobody now would hire them. Nobody would feed them. Nobody would help them in any way, shape, or form. They became homeless. Nobody would take them into their homes. Because if they did, they, they, those people would be punished. So he was, he, he, was, he was telling them in Hebrews, Jesus is better. Wow. Do not leave the faith. So what he meant in Hebrews 6 and 10 is apostasy. To sin willfully means to leave the faith in that portion. Do you understand now? To deny Christ publicly. Apostasy. So the entire book of Hebrews was written to show the, the early Jews that Christ is better than the law. Better than angels. Better than Moses. We have a better covenant. So he said, don't leave. Don't walk away. Here are, here's a list of faith giants that did not walk away. Look how they suffered. They killed some and others were, were tortured and others were fed to lions and others were, were treated so badly. And they didn't leave, so don't you leave. We have a cloud of witnesses. So the entire book was written for one reason. Stay in the faith. So when you read Hebrews from now on, you're not reading and getting confused on portions. Oh my God, you know, if I sin will willfully, I'm out. No, 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 no. It's apostasy is what it's, it's about in that, in that book. Continual sinning. Sinning because of, of loving sin. The difference between a believer and unbeliever is quite simple. The believer hates his sin. The unbeliever loves it. The believer will repent. The unbeliever will not repent. The believer will run to God for forgiveness. The unbeliever will not run to God for forgiveness. That's how you know. If you hate your sin, it means you're in the kingdom. For only those who hate their sin have conviction. Now lift your hands and love him. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. And now I am happy all the day. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith. I receive my sight and now I am happy all the day. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling Cross and, and exchange.
change and someday for a crown. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the, the blood, blood of Jesus. Jesus. Oh, the, the blood, blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow. Oh. White, white as snow for it reaches to the, to the highest mountain, mountain. and, and it flows to the lowest valleys the, the blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never lose its power for it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley. It's the blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose its power. your people I pray minister your mighty power and grace in Jesus holy name glory to the Lamb every eye closed every hand uplifted glory 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 to the Lamb. Glory. Glory. Glory to the Lamb. For you are glory. You're the Lamb upon the throne, and on to you we lift our voice in praise. You're the Lamb upon the throne.
Ascribe glory to thee, we ascribe honor. To thee, we ascribe glory. To thee, we ascribe honor. To thee we ascribe power and majesty, holy is the Lord. To thee we ascribe glory, to thee we ascribe honor to thee we ascribe power and majesty holy Jesus who died now glorified King of all kings so exalt Lift up on high the name of Jesus. Magnify, magnify, come glorify Christ Jesus the King. Majesty, we worship your majesty Jesus who died now glorified King of all kings Jesus oh Jesus Jesus Oh, Jesus, Jesus, oh, Jesus, your presence makes me whole, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, oh, Jesus, Jesus, oh, me. Mm -hmm. 
the sweetest name of all, Jesus, you always hear me when I call, Jesus, you lift me up each time I fall, you're the sweetest, sweetest name. Jesus, you're the sweetest name of all. Jesus, you always hear me when I call. Jesus, you lift me up. You lift me up each time I fall. You're the sweetest, the sweetest name of all. Jesus, you're the sweetest name of all. Tell him, Jesus, you always hear me. You always hear me when I call. Jesus. You lift me up. You lift me up each time, time I, I fall. fall. You're, You're the, the sweetest, sweetest, the sweetest name of all. You're the sweetest, sweetest name of all. Lift your hands and tell him. You're the sweetest. Sweetest name of all. Hallelujah.
those sick in body place your hand on that sickness as I pray for you the Lord's going to heal and touch you heal your people Lord Hallelujah. as you worship him he will touch you I rebuke that sickness in Jesus mighty name your word declares I am the God that healeth thee I give you praise for your promises command every disease to go in Jesus name somebody with an ear infection has just been healed lift your hands begin to pray in the Holy Ghost out loud a skin condition has just been healed to my left arthritis way in the back you've had it really bad in your right hand the last few days I want you to lift your hands and ask the Lord to heal you. Ask him now. Ask him now. That arthritis is leaving now. A skin condition has also just been healed just seconds ago. You just felt like a warmth go right through your body. That's the power of God. Everyone pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on out loud. I see somebody's right leg. Something's wrong with your right leg. The pain is leaving you right now. Pick up that leg up and down. You'll see the pain is leaving. Thank you. Wonderful Jesus. Someone has been having troubles with your stomach. Something to do with your stomach right there on the front area here in the, on my left been having troubles with your stomach is all I know the Lord is healing it you just feel warmth all over that area dearest Jesus and a heart condition too has just been healed keep praying people of God keep praying wonderful Jesus wonderful Savior those of you that are feeling that heat on your body if you know God is healing you, don't wait for me to call out your healing. If God is healing you, don't wait for me to call out your healing. I just saw an elbow being healed. Somebody's elbow, the pain is gone from your elbow. I believe it's in your right, uh, sorry, in your left arm. Thank you, wonderful Lord. Thank you, wonderful Lord. A breathing condition too has just been healed. If you feel that heat on your body and the Lord is healing you, get up out of your seats right now and come stand right here to my left come 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 don't wait for me to call out your healing please the Lord is healing people and I don't have to call your healing out if you feel the anointing on your body you feel heat come stand here on the left everyone else keep praying Lord I give you the praise Lord I give you the praise somebody was in a car accident recently you've had troubles with your neck the Lord has just healed that also a million thanks Lord a million thanks if God is healing you come out of your seat come line up over here to the left don't stay in your seat you can lose that healing if you stay in your seat even though you may not come on the platform or, or you may come up or not come up it doesn't matter let God see you in that line. Let the Lord see you in that line. That's all that matters. Somebody's eye, somebody's eye you've, 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 you've had like a swelling in your, in, your, in, in, in your eye. Bring this man here, please. What happened to him? Pastor Benny, this man has just been healed of a gallbladder condition tonight. Dear Jesus, thanks, thanks. Thanks, thanks, thanks. I give you praise, Lord. Thanks. Keep praying, people. Keep praying. Keep praying. The Lord's healing you. 
What happened to this man, my dear brother? You said a right leg. He had an accident. His right leg was injured. But the Lord has touched and healed his right leg. There are others getting healed. There are others getting healed. I see something wrong in the left side of somebody's lung. I don't know what it is. But the Lord just, you, you, you can feel heat on that area. For years, her left side hurting from an injury, but God has healed her tonight, Pastor Benny. What happened to her? The heat in her right hand from the joint pain that you were talking about in the right hand and elbow. This With lady the has just been, yes, just been healed of arthritis. In the name of Jesus, I give you praise. This is the man with the stomach pain on the left, Pastor Benny. God has just healed his body tonight. Praise for the anointing of the Lord. Just keep praying, people. Keep praying. The Lord is still healing people here. Keep praying. What happened to that lady here? Multiple car accidents in the military. Her cervical spine messed up. God just healed That's her tonight. the one tonight. with the neck, I think, too. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch her, watch her. That's the part of God. Help her up. Every bit of it goes. Every bit of that pain goes. Amen. Help her back. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Pastor Benny, this lady had a dog bite on her left hand. God just healed that condition right she now. She had what now? A dog bite on her hand. God just healed her. What happened Arthritis to the in the right knee that you were talking about. God just healed this lady. Every bed, Lord. Every bed goes. I rebuke it in Jesus' mighty name. What, what happened to the man? His back. The heat came upon him as you were ministering and God healed his back just now. Pastor Benny. Oh, thank you, Lord. We give you the praise and the glory for your mercy's sake. Lord, use him for your sake. Okay. Use him for your glory in Jesus' mighty name. May the power of God rest on his life. For your name's sake, I give you the praise. God's going to use that kid. He's going to be in the, in the ministry. Help him back. Two surgeries, Pastor Benny. She could not lift her hands. God healed her. Look at her hands in the air right now. God just healed her body. Mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Pastor Benny, this mother has been having chest pains. But she felt the heat of the Holy Spirit as you ministered. That's when I just called about the heart. Yes, the heart condition God just healed. Lord, thank you for your power. Thanks for your power. I give you the praise. Help her back. Help her back. The right arm from a cyst, the pain that you were talking about. God just healed the pain in her right arm. Right here, dear. Lord, I thank you for your power. I thank you for your power. Thank you. Oh, honey, there's no need for that. There's no need for that. Okay, thank you. Now, take your seats. Take your seats. And uh, in just a second, what, 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 what happened? This is a pastor, Pastor Benny. Pain in his left side for three years. God just miraculously took that pain out of his left side. This pastor. God bless you, sir. And thanks. Now, tomorrow, help him back. Tomorrow at 12.30, at 12.30, right? Is it 12 or 12.30 tomorrow? 12.30. I, I want to minister to those. Can you help the guy up? And he doesn't need that sheet. He's already covered. So, yeah, you know, at 12.30 tomorrow, I want to minister to those of you in the, in the ministry. So you come. We're going to have a question-answer period tomorrow for about an hour and a half, 
maybe two hours max, okay, two hours max. So you can prepare your questions and bring them with you in the morning. But please limit your questions to the ministry, not anything outside, okay? So tomorrow at 12.30, I believe uh, Bishop Miles is speaking before that in the morning. Then I'll come about 12 or so. And then if we can have two chairs on the platform, uh, you, you can sit with me uh, if you want to, of course, and ask me the questions. Uh, I, I don't know if, if Pastor Dan will be here tomorrow morning or not, so then you can be up with us. and Or Bishop Miles, whoever you want with us on the platform, and we can talk about the ministry, and people may want to ask questions. Pastor Benny, arthritis in both legs. Look at how God just healed Thank and set God. him free tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the anointing. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. Every bit. Help him back. God bless you. Now, uh, Bishop, come up. Come, come with me. I think we're done for now, guys. She said what? Well, thank God the Lord has healed her. She came with the walker. She's healed. To Jesus be the praise. How many of you felt the power of God touch you? Well, look how many of you. Okay, go back to your seats. Give, give the Lord the praise. Let's give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. Come on, saints. Now, Bishop, yeah. So, in just a moment,